Back to the electric car retrofit idea. Now our ask might actually be multiple things. A nice way of thinking about this is like, what do we need next to make this thing happen? Not, what can someone do that we want? This is often more than just money. So I'm gonna say, next steps. I'm gonna put a few things down here. We're clear that we know about technology, but we don't know that much about cars. So we probably want advice from someone in the petrol car business. We've got to know what we're up against, right? We've also identified that one of the biggest barriers for this company to exist is the cost of batteries. And lastly, the money. If we've just said it costs up to $20,000 to do a retrofit, maybe 15 if we're lucky. Let's say that we do 10 to 12 cars. We'll probably learn enough about whether the business can be scaled beyond that by doing those first few prototypes. So let's say 150 to 200K for... It's deceptively simple, right? We've got three different ideas that we can take to the three most important types of sort of investors. So the rest of the pitch deck remains the same if we're speaking to somebody who knows about petrol cars, at which point they'll probably just give us a whole ton of advice about things that we didn't know yet. If we were to take this to somebody that knows a whole bunch about importing batteries or how lithium works or all that kind of stuff, we'd have a very different conversation. If we were to speak to somebody who has access to capital, like an impact funder or venture capitalist, then we would probably just be speaking about how we plan to use that money making the first 10 cars. Obviously, the big guess in all of this is that people think it's a good idea at all, but that's the whole point of making a pitch deck, right? Most interestingly, just the process of doing this pitch deck has taught us a few things. We've identified that we need advice from someone in the petrol car business and experienced knowledge about battery imports. So we might go back to our Trello board and find people who know stuff about importing batteries and the existing petrol car industry. Some basic desktop research will actually show us that there's a whole bunch of people that have tried this stuff before. We found that there's a company from Israel called Better Place who was basically Tesla before Tesla came along. Turns out that Better Place went bankrupt and in 2012, the CEO resigned and was replaced by Evan Thornley. So we might add Evan Thornley to our list. Again, just like the other name that we pulled off Google, it'd be entirely crazy to just go and approach this person off the bat. The next step would be to go and find people that could introduce me to someone that could introduce me to Evan or Jan or whoever else we put in this list. Remember how Dan says you need to go through 100 cold leads before you find a good warm one. One last thing we can actually do with this list now that it's starting to develop is add labels to these. I'm gonna put blue on all the cold leads And then, just because we know Dan, I'm going to add him to the list as a potential investor. And because Dan did a lesson with us, I'd call him a warm lead. So we've got a nice, clear orange for warm, blue for cold, and we're ready to go and hit these people up with our pitch deck. And we're done. Now, as you go out and do this, remember the golden rule. Practice, practice, practice. Practice to your screen, practice to your phone, practice to your friends, your family, random people on the street. Just go out and start talking to people.